On today's video, we're going to compare these two classic air rifles, the Daisy Powerline and the Crossman Pumpmaster. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and like I said earlier, today's video is going to be about comparing these two classic air rifles, alright? We're going to compare the Daisy Powerline, alright, up against the Crossman Pumpmaster. And when I say classic, I truly mean it because both these rifles have been around an awfully long time. We're going to go through both these rifles, we're going to load them up, we're going to pump them up, we're going to shoot them uh, at targets, we're going to see which one's the most accurate, we're going to see which one's the most uh, easy to use, and you know, kind of at the end of it all, I'll give you my two cents on maybe which one I think is best. I grew up in a subdivision where there was a lot of kids all around the same age that I was, and we all had BB guns, and it was very common for you know like me and the guys I hung out with to all grab our BB guns get together in kind of a posse and head to the woods and shoot our BB guns we would shoot cans we would shoot milk cartons uh, there were some ponds in the area we would shoot out into these ponds and you know we would shoot a few squirrels and birds too probably weren't supposed to but we did but it was a lot of fun BBs are so cheap you know, it really gave us a lot of really good, inexpensive fun being able to head out to the woods and just shoot our BB guns. Now, amongst the guys that I hung out with, there was a lot of different styles and types of BB guns, but this Daisy Powerline and this Crossman Pumpmaster were kind of the high end, right? At least for what uh, our parents bought us or our parents could afford to get us. Um, those were the two that were kind of the high end and there was always kind of this debate, you know, which one was better. You know, me personally, I did have this Daisy Powerline. And I'll tell you what, um, this gun has not changed a bit in, you know, say the 40 years since I had one. I also had some friends that had the Crossman Pumpmaster. Now, the design of the Crossman Pumpmaster has changed a little bit since the version from when I was a kid, the forearm that you used to pump the air rifle up was much shorter back when I was a kid. They have lengthened that up a little bit. And I think that was a pretty good design because that short forearm didn't offer you a whole lot of leverage for when you were pumping the gun up. And like I said, it was always kind of a little bit of debate. Oh no, you know, my gun's better. Oh no, this one's better. So I figured, what the heck? After 40 years or so, I'll pick up the newest version of each one, compare the two, and maybe once and for all, figure out which one is truly better. This Daisy Powerline, I picked this up, it was like $37 at Walmart, okay? Now, this particular one, this particular package for $37 did come with a scope, okay? But I'm not going to use the scope for this comparison because the Crossman Pumpmaster did not come with a scope, okay? So we're just going to go open sites for this comparison. And, you know, this Pumpmaster was like $32, okay? So the Daisy was a little bit more expensive, but it came with a scope. And we can kind of compare a few things right away just by kind of reading off the boxes, okay? Both these air rifles are... 10 pump maximum air rifles. This uh, Crossman Pump Master, all right, uh, 10 pumps will get you 700 feet per second. With the Daisy Power Line, you can get up to 800 feet per second. Okay, so the Daisy's a little bit more powerful. Both of these rifles take BBs or pellets. And then with both of these air rifles, if you're going to shoot pellets, it's just kind of a single shot deal where you load one pellet at a time. One thing about the Daisy, it's about three inches longer. It's a little bit bulkier on the forearm than the Crossman Pumpmaster. The, the Crossman Pumpmaster is, is overall a, a much tighter, smaller rifle. But we'll go through the process of each one on how to uh, load it and pump it up and, of course, shoot it. 
And the Daisy has this little door right here that you open up and pour the BBs in. Once you get enough BBs in it, then you close it back up. And then the next thing you do is you go to your bolt right there and you pull it back and then you can put the safety on and now you can pump it and you can pump both of these up to 10 pumps you know I, I generally go at least five no matter what if I'm just kind of target practicing I'll, I'll pump them up five times for our little comparison I'm gonna pump them both up to 10 for each shot just so everything's you know as close to you know apples to apples as we can get it all right okay so bolt back on safety and now we can pump it up and I'll go ahead and I'll pump this up 10 times one four five six seven eight and ten okay and it does have this nice handle right get your fingers in there good it's, it's fairly secure and then you go ahead and you push the bolt forward and there should be a BB in there okay you should be able to see a BB come through push it all the way forward all right and now as soon as you take this off safety it can fire all right so I'm gonna step out fire this off and we'll go through the crossman now the crossman's a little bit different you actually load it by flipping this forward pushing that forward there's a little hole right there and you pour the BBs in there then you close it back up and then the crossman has a BB magazine up here and you have this little thumb lever all right and you kind of pull it back and shake it down push it back in place and this BB magazine kind of fills up all right and, and that kind of gets the BBs ready to go into the chamber now if you read through the instructions of the pump master it basically just says to put it on safety you can put this one on safety right away Go ahead and pump it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you pull the bolt back, okay? Ease it forward. And you kind of want to look and make sure there's a BB in there, all right? Push it all the way forward. And now this gun, when you take it off safety, is ready to fire. Now, if you want to shoot pellets, the daisy tells you you want to get all the BBs out of the gun first, okay? Uh, you know, they have several warnings about getting, you know, a pellet and a BB in the chamber at the same time, all right? So they want you to get all the BBs out of it, all right? And then at that point, it would sort of be the same thing, all right? You pull the bolt back, put it on safety, you go ahead and pump it up 10 times, and then you would take the individual pellet and you would load it with your fingers into that little chamber and then you would push it forward okay and then when you took it off safety it'd be ready to fire now with the crossman what you can do is you can empty that BB magazine alright close it up and then no BB's can get up in here and then at that point it's kind of the same thing you want the gun to be on safety pump it up ten times pull the bolt back load the pellet in by hand with your fingers close the bolt and now when you take it off safety it'll be ready to fire now right off the bat I'll tell you I do kind of think the daisy is easier to pump okay it's got this nice handle seems to open and close pretty easy you know the one thing is if you're not really paying attention kinda of the the tops of your knuckles kinda of wrap as you're closing it but once you kind of get used to it, you really don't do that anymore. Whereas the Crossman, it doesn't really have a handle here. It's just kind of got this forearm that you grab. And, and it's kind of narrow. You know, you got to be pretty deliberate to, uh, you know, kind of hold on to it and pump it. I maybe prefer pumping the Daisy over the Crossman. Now, both these rifles feel real good when you pull them up to your shoulder okay but the Crossman Pump Master overall again it is a little bit smaller okay so it's a little bit more compact it's a little bit tighter to pull up at least to my shoulder so in that regard I do kind of prefer the Daisy but I know a lot of you guys out there may really prefer having a little smaller more compact rifle okay so that's just kind of a quick overview of the two rifles 
But I would highly recommend, you know, if you actually buy one of these rifles, read that manual that comes with them from start to finish. Make sure you get all the safety stuff down pat and make sure you're using them correctly. Okay, now through the magic of video, I went ahead and I went out and I shot both of these, okay? I shot them off of a good steady rest. I shot them at targets that were probably 15 yards away, all right? And the first one I shot was the Crossman Pump Master, and I shot it with BBs. And I'll tell you what, it had a real nice tight pattern. I didn't even do anything to the sights. It was like pretty much sighted in, okay? Uh, I did even get a couple bullseyes, and pretty much um, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, six shots. Everything was in this uh, inner green circle. So I was really pleased with that. And then I grabbed the Daisy, and I shot that with BBs, and the results weren't quite as good. I took six shots with the Daisy, and I really didn't have that tight of a pattern. You know, they, they were spread out a little bit. I think the elevation was okay, but, uh, you know, kind of my windage was, was kind of all over the place, you know. So I, I wasn't super pleased with that. All right. So then I went on to pellets. And I went ahead and I shot pellets out of the Crossman. That was not good at all, okay? Um, I shot at this uh, lower right-hand target, and I was over here, I was over here, and then a few of them were right off the target. So right away, um, the groupings were much larger when I shot pellets out of the Crossman. And I will say, for each gun, like when I shot the Crossman, I used Crossman BBs. And when I used pellets with the Crossman, they were Crossman pellets, okay? Same thing with the Daisy. When I shot the Daisy, I used Daisy BBs. And when I shot pellets out of the Daisy, they were Daisy pellets, okay? Manufacturer recommends using, you know, their own stuff. I'm not sure how much it matters. It's probably more of a sales thing. But that's what I went ahead and did for this kind of comparison. So then I shot pellets out of the Daisy and they weren't as bad you know there was a little bit of a pattern again i was shooting at this uh lower right hand target and it wasn't too bad you know at, at least the the daisy was consistent between the bb's and the pellets you know one was really not any worse than the other but i'll tell you and, and i remember this as a kid pellets are much more of a pain to load there's no doubt about it and you know if the performance isn't going to be any better really why would you ever bother with pellets so then what I did I put two new targets out and going forward I'm just gonna be shooting BBs out of both of these rifles and then I went ahead and I shot the Daisy first you know the the group maybe was a little bit tighter okay it, it was tight enough that I kind of realized that the Daisy was shooting a little bit high maybe I'll make an adjustment but I'm gonna go to the Crossman next and I went to the Crossman and it was kind of the same thing, you know, I did get one bullseye, and the others were still in that inner green circle, and the shots were pretty decent, it, it was a pretty tight group. Again, I didn't see any reason to really adjust the Crossman, and it seemed to be shooting pretty decent. So then I went back to the Daisy, and I did make an adjustment to the elevation. I kind of, uh, I brought it down a little bit, because I was shooting a little high, so I brought that down. My next shots were these circles, and, and they did come down some, but then another thing that I definitely noticed is I was a little bit off to the left. So then I was like, okay, it's a little bit off to the left. I did make an adjustment to the windage. It did come over a little bit. I put X's on those ones, but it, still the pattern really wasn't very tight. Um, I'm not the greatest shooter in the world, but I certainly could shoot tighter groups with the Crossman. Now, one thing I will say, the Crossman does have the elevation adjustment on this rear sight, but it does not have a windage adjustment. Okay, so if you're off left or right, I'm not really sure what you would do about that, okay? You might just kind of have to kind of compensate, which, which is not really ideal. Whereas the Daisy, it does have certainly has the elevation adjustments when you're sighting in, but it also has windage. So you can adjust that, you know, up, down, left, right, whereas the Crossman doesn't give you that left, right adjustment. 
And one other thing that I did notice, when you got BBs in the daisy and you pull that bolt back, a BB like immediately falls into place and it's all set. And there's really no jockeying around, there's no shaking back and forth, there's no kind of pulling kind of hard on it. You pull that bolt back, boom, a BB just flops right into place. It's like no problem. Sometimes with the Crossman, when you pull that bolt back, you know, when you're shooting BBs, you kind of need to shake it around. Sometimes you need to pull back a little bit. The BB doesn't roll into the chamber with the bolt back nearly as easy as it does with the Daisy. Okay, guys, so a quick overview, all right? The Daisy. I like the size of it. I like the feel of it. A little bit more bulky on the forearm. A little bit more length to it. I do like that. When you pull this bolt back, BBs flop right into place real easy. The pumping is fairly easy. The Daisy comes with uh, adjustments on this rear sight for windage and elevation, but wasn't quite as accurate as the Crossman, right? Crossman, it's a little smaller gun, it's a little tighter. Some people might prefer that. It's a little bit harder to have the BBs flop into place. You know, into when you pull the bolt back, it's a little harder to have the BBs flop into place and get them loaded. It has elevation adjustments on the rear sight, but it does not have windage. Fortunately for us, that really didn't matter because, man, it was it was sighted in uh, quite well right out of the box, so I really didn't have to do anything with it. Um, you know, gosh, which one do I like better? At the end of the day, accuracy is king, right? You know, if you're going to do uh, any kind of shooting, you want the gun to be accurate. If you told me, hey, Dave, you're going to starve to death unless you can go out in the woods and get yourself a red squirrel, you can take one of these rifles with you. Which one's it going to be? Hey, I'm going to have to take the Crossman Pump Master, right? Uh, that's the one that I shot a lot tighter groups. I would feel a lot better about my chances if I had to go out and, uh, you know, shoot my dinner. I'd rather have the Crossman Pump Master. But these are both good budget air rifles, right? can get either one of these for less than 40 bucks. But I know a lot of you guys out there have experiences with one or both of these air rifles, okay? So go ahead and leave some comments below. You know, tell me which one you have. Tell me which one you like. Tell me what you like about it. Tell me what you don't like about it. You know, I'd really like to hear your comments on this subject too. But anyways, guys, hey, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.